Hey what's up you guys, welcome back to my channel, if you're new here, hi, hello, I'm Lydia and if you are new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button, enjoy the growing family, help me reach 10k because that would be amazing, think of all the awareness we can spread. Today I need to put a trigger warning for suicide attempts. Today I'm talking about my worst suicide attempt. So like I said, this video is going to be pretty intense. My worst suicide attempt wasn't when I was section under section 3. It was before that. Basically what happened is I was having a bath. I was living with Becca at this point. I said I was going to have a bath. I went in the kitchen and got all my insulin out of the fridge. I got the box that I had in the room. And honestly, I just kept injecting my insulin until the police turned off. Now I didn't want to get charged to fix a, bed, to fix a bathroom door. So I did open the door to them. They said I didn't have capacity. They gave me the choice of putting shoes and I'm walking out of them or they dragged me out. My blood sugar dropped to 1.8, which is dangerous. I should have been in a coma. When we got outside the, my flat, the police put me on a section 136. If you are interested in learning about a section 136, I'll link on the iCard up there. I made videos talking about section 136. So if you, again, if you have any questions about that, let me know in the comments down below. The police took me to the A&E. I was trying to leave, so they handcuffed me to the bed. Which was horrible. I tried to refuse treatment. I didn't have capacity, so they went ahead and treated me anyway. I was rushed into resus because of how low my sugar level was. And they went to inject me with lorazepam and I moved. So I've got a scar on my ass, but the needle scraped it. But they managed to pin me down and inject me with lorazepam. And then they started to, they put IVs in both arms. Of glucose. Once I was out of the danger zone, I was transferred to majors. I was unhandcuffed from my bed. Then I realised in my handbag that I had another insulin pen and I went to the bathroom on my own because there was, a, there was two male police officers that were there and they thought I'd be okay because I basically snuck my insulin pen under my sleeve. It was a really dark time in my life. With the insulin pen I injected the whole thing and my blood sugar dropped again and I was put on glucose. I was kept in AAU, which if you want me to make a video on AAU, let me know, because I spent a week in there when I was admitted under a section 3. I've, I've been in AAU a lot of my diabetes. I've been in AAU because of my mental health. So if you want me to talk about that, let me know. Why that was the most serious attempt I made is the level my blood sugar dropped to should have been low enough to put me in a coma. If I had capacity, I would have refused treatment. It's so hard when they say you don't have capacity because they can, they can do what they want. They can sedate you so they can treat you. That's what they tried to do with the lorazepam in me, but it's no one's noticed it doesn't work. I take two milligrams of lorazepam every day at night. I can have two milligrams twice a day on PRN. I take it at night because it stops the nightmares. So, yeah. But it was a serious attempt on my life. The scariest attempt on my life would be when I stepped over the barrier of the bridge. The only reason I'm still alive from that one is because someone got out of the car and around about and stopped and grabbed hold of me. And then someone else came over and they pulled me over the side and waited for police. Police put me in handcuffs straight away and then said they were taking me in a section 136. So, if you are wondering what goes on when I attempt suicide, then there's, here's the ins and the outs basically. It's, it's never been an easy thing that I've done. It's so hard having suicide attempts in the past because when you know what works, you try and get your hands on it and you do, do anything to just take your life. I've been having a lot of dark thoughts the last few days and I've been trying to work out how I can get my insulin 
at the fridge without the keys. Which is just isn't a way. My god, it's hard admitting this stuff. But that was my most serious suicide attempt. They did get my sugars up after three days of constant glucose. Insulin overdoses are serious. Every overdose is serious. It's not normal to want to take an overdose of anything. But we do it. And I honestly don't want to say about it. Because no one should be in a position where they feel like that's their only Suicide is not the way out. It just causes pain to those around you. Anyway, this is a bonus video for the week. I thought I'd upload one midweek just to catch up, I guess. I really wanted to make this video. In case you're wondering what happened after that suicide attempt, I was put on a section two. They, the the amp and the section twelve doctor and the independent psychiatrist didn't even talk to me. They they read my notes and put me on a section two. Which was a reasonable response, I guess. See, some munitions you don't get the option to choose if you go in informally, they just section you. Honestly, being sectioned is one of the hardest things to deal with. That's for another video. If you take anything from this video, I want you to take that it's okay to not be okay. I'd rather hear your story than read your, your eulogy. If you are struggling, please reach out for support. I'm not a professional, but I will message back. If you just want somewhere to rent, my inboxes are open. But please, I beg of you, no dick pics. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching this video and if you are new like a star hit the subscribe button to join notification <laughs> Turn notifications on and I will see you in my next video which will be Friday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Peace.